Hello from ULAR 2022, day one. Uh, my name is Eric Dine. I'm coming from uh, New Jersey in the US, virtually tuning into Copenhagen uh, with Room Now uh, and had a wonderful first day so far at the conference. Um, one of the sessions that had the most uh, attention and conversation was the ULAR updated recommendations for various rheumatic diseases. I'm gonna talk about the updates for Inca vasculitis. This was last updated in 2016. And as we all know, there's been a number of different trials and studies that have updated and changed our management and our medications for Inca vasculitis. So of course, there's been trials such as the PEXIVAS and the ADVOCATE trial, which have been um, incorporated into these new data. Uh, we feel that um, rituximab is shown to be in the ULA recommendations as the preferred treatment for most patients for remission and maintenance. Uh, and this includes even in non-organ threatening disease, there's a, a earlier preference now for rituximab over some of the other conventional um, DMARDs, which uh, still had more of a steroid uh, burden in those patients. Um, there's a lower steroid recommendation for patients with Inca vasculitis. Uh, this is a reflection of the PEXIVAS trial with a recommendation to start on 50 to 75 milligrams with a decrease uh, to five milligrams by four to five months. Um, they note that you can use a vacapan to decrease steroids. They did not specifically recommend how to use that or what, what type of steroid decrease can be used as a result. Uh, so that's something that I think we'll have to flesh out with some more um, information as we get more trials with a vacapan. They also recommend coming from the PEXIVAS trial, no routine use of PLEX for alveolar hemorrhage. They do allow that you can consider the use of PLEX for um, active glomerulonephritis with severe renal dysfunction. So there is possibly somewhat of a role for you to con um, consider, but not for routine usage. One thing that's new with the Inca vasculitis recommendations this year is it does also include um, some new recommendations for eGPA that hasn't previously been part of it. Uh, so they recommend cytoxin for organ or life-threatening disease. Um, they state that uh, high glucocorticoid high glucocorticoids with rituximab can be considered, but the evidence still favors cyclophosphamide, cyclophosphamide as first lane for eGPA. Rituximab, I'm sorry, um, without, um, with patients that have no organ or life-threatening disease, glucocorticoids alone is appropriate treatment. And if they have um, relapsing or refractory disease without um, organ or life-threatening disease, mepolizumab has the role there. For maintenance of life-threatening disease or organ-threatening disease, really across the board, methotrexate, azathioprine, uh, mepolizumab, rituximab are all options and they don't have any preference in them in the recommendations at this point. Um, the other piece of information that was revised in, in these recommendations was a grade B recommendation based on level 3B evidence for recommended use of Bactrim for pneumocystis prophylaxis on patients on rituximab cyclophosphamide and or glucocorticoid high dose therapy. Uh, so this was interesting. Um, it's very split as to whether or not you need to use um, pneumocystis prophylaxis in patients on rituximab um, who are not on high dose steroids. I, I, I asked it on um, the Twitter poll and it currently is at 51% say no. And it's been kind of bouncing back and forth be between the 50% mark um, all afternoon. So. Uh, there's definitely um, some questions here as to what the role is for pneumocystis prophylaxis, but ULAR is recommending for it. Uh, and this also shows kind of a, a evolution of the guidelines from the prior uh, guidelines in 2016, and, and it shows some of the, the gaps that we will have to answer in the future um, with regards to which are the patients to use uh, Avacapan and how we can use steroid uh, sparing therapies and, and decrease steroid um, in, in these patients, as well as um, what the role is for mepolizumab and some of the other treatment options for eGPA. Uh, so lots of information here. Uh, I think lots more to come in Inca vasculitis as we've seen quite an evolution over the past six years since the last guidelines. Um, we'll be checking in throughout uh, ULAR conference, so tune into Room Now for lots more coverage.